Okay, so here we go, planetary boundaries. Um, so this is the last section, this is 1.6F. Um, now I've not dealt separately with 1.6D and E, but I think we've talked, you know, the, they're, they're about increased human pressures, sustainability and political decision making, which is sort of a, a more of an overarching thing. So what do you need to know about planetary boundaries? Well, you kind of need to know what they are. So these are uh, looking at the planet as a whole, setting what are sort of safe operating spaces for humanity. So what they're saying is that if we could keep everything within this green circle, and this is uh, produced by the Stockholm Resilience Centre, this diagram, um, then all would be well and the planet would kind of, you know, jog along in a kind of a balanced way with us. And the idea is that human activities are actually are changing things and they wanted to talk, define how those things might change and you can do that with com you know, computer modelling. Um, so the planetary boundaries sort of represent the, the, the bit that we should stay within, like any boundary sets a bit that you should stay within. And you can see that already We've got some red creeping lines where we're creeping towards planetary boundaries. So ocean acidification, for example, we can tell by monitoring that the oceans are getting more and more acidic and we're creeping towards this outer layer of where it's going to be safe. You can see that we have crossed out of that safe zone in three key areas. So climate change, the biodiversity, and the nitrogen um, and those are obviously of concern and the idea of where you cross the planetary boundary is like you might not notice something on a day-to-day -day basis but we're outside of the safe zone and that means that the effects of that are going to be unpredictable we don't know what the knock-on effect is going to be of such severe biodiversity loss and an accelerating rate of extinction is it going to plunge us into a mass extinction? Is it going to be able to restabilize with this sort of lower diversity? Climate change, we've crossed the planetary boundary. And that means we have no idea what is going to happen. And it could be quite a rapid change. It could be a very uh, slow change. It could be irreversible. It could be that now we've crossed it, we can never go back. We, you know, that's it. We're outside of the safe zone. And you can see we're creeping really close with all our nutrients. So this is the nitrogen bar, crossed, phosphorus getting there. Um, and if you look it up on the internet, you'll see that there are a number of, bar you know, that there are other ones that we are very, very close to crossing. And some that have not yet been quantified, like um, chemical pollution. So you might read quite a lot about microplastics, but we don't know what effect that is going to have. The uh, atmospheric aerosol loading, not yet, don't really know where our safe zone is for that yet either. Um, so there are ones that we can do something about staying within the boundaries and there are ones that we need to manage and limit uh, so that we don't go further down this, <laughs> down this uh, rocky road outwards of our planetary boundaries. Um, I did hear quite a disturbing talk by the Stockholm Resilience Centre about the um, effects of climate change and the climbing temperatures uh, you know, across the globe. Um, even if we stay within the Paris Agreement and there's only a two degrees rise in temperature, uh, we're still going to pretty much lose our coral reefs. That's really quite sad. Uh, we shouldn't be doing that. You've got to think, we shouldn't be doing that. So, biodiversity, we have crossed that. That is about extinction because of loss of habitat. Uh, that's across the globe, so it's marine, it's tundra, it's coral reefs, it's coastal plains. Uh, and because we're losing those habitats, and some of them, obviously tundra will be going because of global warming, we're going to lose those uh, species. They're just going to go a bit like the mammoth, really. Um, 
raising public awareness, you know, you've all seen the adverts for the poor snow leopard and this and that and the other pandas and all the rest of it. I don't know how you could not be aware of this. Um, and of course we've got things like San Diego have a frozen zoo with you know, sort of bits of tissue in so they can clone animals in the future. Not sure about that. I'm thinking consequent loss of biodiversity, of the genetic diversity of those species. And why would you value something that you thought you could bring back? Hmm. It's a little bit of a rocky area, that one. Uh, climate change, obviously, which we've crossed that. Greenhouse gases, we've been uh, using burning fossil fuels, which where the carbon was locked away, it's now hanging around in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Um, it's letting light through but not heat out and that is going to warm the planet up and in increase the carbon dioxide. Um, at the idea of biofuels was that they would use up the carbon dioxide and then you would release it back and um, how successful that's been is well you can look it up you know some of them are more successful than others it has to be said and I'm thinking questions you might get data on that you know how successful have they been? Um, nitrogen cycle has been crossed. We're using fertilisers. We're causing eutrophication issues. Um, we're draining wetlands for uh, for use in agriculture. And you should be able to explain the effects of eutrophication with regard to the nitrogen cycle and predict what will happen in a drained wetland to things like nitrification and denitrification. Um, there is the, the phosphorus boundary, we're fairly close. You do need to know that phosphate's one of the sort of, you know, key mineral elements in, um, in plant growth. And again, to be able to, to write about that. I'm thinking pretty much you'd be unlucky to be asked about things that we haven't crossed yet. Uh, and certainly, you know, they might give you some data to interpret, but if you've not yet quantified where your boundaries are, I don't really see that, you know, you could be potentially asked about that. However, you should know that air pollution is bad and um, sulphur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide might be dissolving and co causing problems with acidification. Uh, the aerosol loading, Again, that's particulate, so and we're not uh, sure what that will cause um, or where the boundary should be. So you might be talking about things like, you know, bl blocking out light with particles, things like smog. You might be talking about holes in the ozone layer there. The um, ocean acidification is avoidable, but again, that relates into the sort of fossil fuel use. Um, and and fish farming. Uh, the ozone boundary has been avoided, so we, you know, use of CFCs have, has been banned, and that hole in the ozone layer is now closing up. So that stratospheric ozone depletion, and we've kind of you know clawed that one back a bit. What have I not dealt with yet? Uh, global fresh water use still within safe boundaries, and there are things like. Uh, desalination. Uh, most of the fresh water is not usable um, on the planet because of water treatment. But you can sort of, you know, desalinate seawater to avoid crossing that boundary. And then changes in land use. Again, we should be thinking really carefully. There is a conflict over land use and food production, but we should be changing our farming practices. Uh, we should be not encouraging huge monocultures and destruction of rainforests, which is what our deforestation video is about. So, you know, kind of it's down to you lot really, you're the future, you need to prevent your governments encouraging activities to cross planetary boundaries, I think is the bottom line. You need to get involved, especially with the up and coming election, read the manifestos, vote for a party that you think's best.